This is a LAC 142 problem sheet 5 on power and this is answering question 4. So what you're told, this time there's no circuit diagram, but we can visualise the circuit. So you're told a series RL circuit, so that's got a resistor and an inductor, where R is 60 ohms and L is 75 millihenries, is connected to a 110 volt RMS 60 hertz cosinusoidal supply. So using this information you're asked to A, calculate the power dissipated by the circuit by finding first 1, the reactance of the inductor, 2, the current flowing in the circuit, 3, the power factor. And then once we've got all of these we can go back and answer the original question. And you're given the additional hint of be aware when you're using an RMS and when you're using peak values when solving. So let's have a look at how we go about solving this one. So what I've done to begin with is I've just drawn my circuit out because for me this really helps me visualize what's going on. So we've got our source and it's a cosine, it's cosinusoidal we've been told that and we can assume there's no phase shift because there was none given in the question. Um, I've written up here my information that's relevant so I've been told the source is 110 volts RMS. To express that in phasor form, we need to convert it into its peak value. So to do that, because we know it's a sinusoid, in this case it's a cosine, what we do to find that peak value is we take the 110 volt RMS value and then multiply it by root 2. That's the true for any sinusoid, be a sine or a cosine function. What you get then is a peak value of 155.6 volts, and uh, that's what I've put across here in my phasor form. Um, next up, we've been told that the supply frequency is 60 hertz. Um, note this is not an omega value. Omega is equal to 2 pi f, and here we've just got f. Um, so we need to convert to omega. So if you just put the values in, so 2 times pi times 60 will give us a omega value of 377 radians per second. So now we've done that, we've done the groundwork, we can go on to solve the rest of the question. So first up, what is the reactance of that inductor? So what's XL? Well, we know that XL is equal to J omega L, so just put the values that we've worked it out in. So we worked out what omega was, that's 377. So it's J times 377 times 75 millihenries, so that's 75 times 10 to the minus 3, which will give us a value of 28.275 J ohms, or to express that in its full rectangular form, that's 0 because there's no real part, plus 28.275 J ohms. And that's the answer to part one. Part two, we need to find the current flowing in the circuit. So let's look at how we do this. Well, we can see using Kirchhoff's voltage law that the voltage supplied by the source is going to be equal to the voltage in the resistor plus the voltage in the inductor. So let's just write that out. So we've got our voltage from the source, which is 155 0.6 volts at an angle of zero degrees, and that's going to be equal to the voltage across the resistor, which is going to be I, the phasor form of the current, times 60, because our resistor is 60 ohms, plus the voltage in the inductor, which is going to be that same value of I, because it's a series circuit, this time times 28.275 J, because that's the complex impedance or the reactance of that component. So what I've done in this step is I've just factorized I out, so we know that the voltage is going to be equal to I times 60 plus 28.275 J. So we rearrange for I, we get an expression like this, what we need to do is we need to convert the bottom into, into polar form because we're doing a division. So we end up with this expression, and then if you just do that polar division, you end up with an answer that the current is 2.4 at an angle of minus 25.2 amps. So that's our phasor expression for our current. So what do we need to solve next? Um, no, I've left that just as a phasor form because I wasn't asked to supply it in a time domain form. So you don't need to do the extra step if you're not given it. Okay, so finally, part penultimately, part three, we're going to find the power factor. So this is introducing that power idea into our question, which so far has been just circuit analysis. So we know that the power factor is equal to the cosine of the angle of the current minus the angle of the voltage. So that 
angle is going to be the either the angle on the um, right hand side of the phasor form or it's that phase shift if you write it out in cosinusoidal form. Um, that's where that comes from. And what we know is that theta v is zero degrees. Um, that's what's supplied by the source. And we know that there's actually no change of that because there was nothing given at the beginning. And we know that theta i is going to be equal to minus 25.2 degrees because that's what we just worked out in that previous step. We found the expression for the current. So here's that minus 25.2 up here. So all we do is we just put these values into our expression and to find the power factor we want to find the cosine of minus 25.2 degrees minus zero degrees and that gives us a power factor of 0.91. So that's part three done. So now we've got all these values we need to calculate the power dissipated by the circuit. So we're going to go back and answer this final part of the question that we needed to answer all of these bits to get to. So this is when we're asked for the power used in the circuit, we're interested in a value in watts. So we're interested in the real power or P, which we know that the value of this is going to be equal to the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the power factor of that circuit. So we're just going to put the values in. So we've got voltage in RMS. We were given that at the beginning because we know it's a 110 volt RMS supply. We converted it into a peak value to solve for the current. And the value of our current of 2.4 is actually a peak value. So what we need to do to convert it to an RMS value, we then need to take that 2.4 and divide it by root 2. And that will then be an RMS value. So that's I RMS, which is what we need for this question. And the power factor we put in, which was 0 0.91, which you just calculated. So once you do that, you'll get a value out of 169.9 watts. Uh, and that's how we do it. So we had quite a few different bits and pieces going on there. We had RMSs and peak values, and we used phase angles to find the various values of what's going on in that circuit. So that was question four. Question five. Oh, says an inductor is connected to 150 volt RMS 50 hertz cosinusoidal supply. The apparent power of the circuit is, is 300 volt amperes. Calculate first up the RMS value of the current, then the impedance of the inductor, and then finally the value of the inductor in Henry's. So this is um, slightly the opposite around. Normally, we're given a value of the inductor in Henry's and we work backwards to find other things out. So this is operating in the reverse order, but if you just follow it through step by step, it shouldn't cause you too many problems. So again, this is quite a wordy one. So what I've done to begin with is I've drawn a circuit diagram. So here's my source and it's connected just to an inductor. There's nothing else in this circuit. So that's the thing that's conceptually difficult here. If you can understand that, you're well on the way. And now I've wrote my useful information up here. So the supply is 150 volts RMS at 50 hertz. And we're also given S, which is 300 volt amperes. So first up, let's find what the RMS current is in the circuit. Well, if you think about the power triangle and the power equations, um, what I've done is I've actually drawn it here. So we know that S is 300 volt amperes. I just use this as an aid to help me realize what's going on, but this is entirely optional for you to do. But we know that S is equal to the RMS voltage multiplied by the RMS current. So we know S and we know VRMS so we can write this expression here. And because it's that simple, we can find that the RMS current is actually just two amps. So far, so good. Um, the main thing that's difficult there is that you're given um, S, which is quite an unusual value to be given. But just draw the triangle and have a think. Um, you'll never be asked a question that's impossible. So it can be helpful to write down what you've got and then work out where you can go from there. So part two, we're asked to find the impedance of the inductor. So we're going to find the value of XL. Um, the trick here is because we only have an inductor in the circuit, there's nothing else. Normally we're looking at something with a resistor in it as well. This time there's only inductor. Because there's only an inductor, we can write 
that x of L, which is, remember, going to be a value in ohms, is equal to V over I. This is exactly the same as you could do if you had just a single resistor powered by something. So if we put our values in, what we get out is a value of 75 ohms. But remember, because it's an inductor, it's going to have that positive J. Um, and because, oh, another thing to mention is I've used RMS values here. So I've just done 150 over 2. Um, because these are both RMS values, it's okay to do this. Um, what you can't do here is mix an RMS value and a peak value. If they're both peak values, that's fine. If they're both RMS values, that's fine. Just make sure you're consistent. Um, um, like I say, the value of that uh, inductor reactance is J75 ohms. Um, so that's that one. And part C asked to find the value of the inductor in Henry's. So we're most of the way there now. We've found out the impedance. Now we're going to do that final backward step and find the value of the inductor in Henry's. So what is the value of L? We know that XL is equal to J omega L and we have the value of X of L and we also have the value of omega. Although we have to do a little bit more of a step because we actually have um, the value given in hertz rather than radians per second. So I've just put my values in and because I'm only, um, I've just put my values in, which is this step here. So J75 is going to equal to J omega L. We can cancel the J's out because there's one on each side. So then we get 75 is equal to omega L. We don't have the value of omega, but we have the value in hertz. So we know that omega is equal to 2 pi f. So 50 times 2 times pi um, times L is equal to 75. And then we can rearrange and find the value of L is 0.239 henrys. And that's how we solve that one. So now let's do question 6. Um, so these last three questions have been looking at um, solving power in um, slightly less than straightforward ways. Um, they shouldn't be too difficult, but it's getting you to think a bit more critically about what we've been doing instead of just memorising how to solve things. So it's asking you things we already know, but just in a slightly different way each time. So question six says a transformer has an apparent power, which is sometimes called the rated power. That's what you'll see on the plate of a transformer um, of 200 kilovolt amperes and a power factor of 0.8. So with this information, we need to find values for the real power output and also the reactive power. And then we're going to finish up by drawing a power triangle for this system. So let's take a look. So this is quite a short one, as you can see. It's only taken me half a page to do it. So we know that S is our apparent power, is 200 kilovolt amperes. And we've said in the question before that S was equal to the RMS current times the RMS voltage. I've just put that up there because that's helpful. We're also given the power factor, which is 0 0.8. And we know that the power factor is equal to the cosine of the phase angle of the current minus the phase angle of the voltage. So that's the information we've been given. So let's start to tackle this question. Well first up, what's the real power? The real power is equal to P, which is equal to the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the power factor. Well as we can see, S is actually equal to VRMS IRMS. So we can just substitute this value straight in. So that's 200K times the power factor, which we're also given, which is 0 0.8. And if you just do that um, calculation, you'll find the real power is 160 kilowatts. So the tricky part there was recognizing that S was equal to IRMS VRMS. So you did have the information to answer that question. Next up, we're going to find the reactive power Q. And we can find the value of Q by saying it's VRMS times IRMS times, this time, the sine of the phase angle of the current minus the phase angle of the voltage. Um, the thing here is we know that the power factor is equal to 0 0.8, which is equal to the cosine of this angle. The angle is the same, it's just this time we need the sine of it rather than the cosine. So if you take the inverse cosine of 0 0.8, you'll end up with a value of this angle 
and this angle it turns out is 36.87 degrees so then we take the sine of that it becomes 0.6 we substitute our value of s for the RMS voltage times the RMS current as we did before so that's 200k so 200k times 0.6 gives an answer of 120k vars um, so remember your units when you're answering that one so as you can see there wasn't really that much to do it was just asked in a way that initially you might find a bit confusing unless you've practiced it and finally I've drawn the power triangle um, so here it is here um, I've drawn it more or less to scale you don't have to be perfectly accurate just don't be way out so we know that P is 160k watts so I've drawn that along there Q is 120k VAR so they're all the same order of magnitude um, it's just the Q is slightly shorter than the P and S is 120k um, volt amperes that's our power triangle um, we know that Q is in this direction because Q is positive um, and also because it's a transformer and transformers use inductors so you would be expecting that to have a positive Q value as well